Hey everybody, it's Sully Man again, uh, here to bring you another boring tutorial uh, that you'll painfully have to sit through and uh, hopefully by the end learn nothing. Uh, but in all seriousness and joking aside, uh, today we're going to be working on Adobe Illustrator's feature of recolor artwork. Um, I think it was live color, or it might, might even still be live color, but uh, basically it's it's a tool that is super useful, especially if you're doing t-shirt art or having to recolor stuff and make sure everything's one consistent pan tone, tone, or just generally recoloring things. It's a super powerful tool. Uh, we're going to be working on this design, uh, which is actually my artwork. It's um, my Save the Hooters design uh, this month. Uh, being October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, made this design uh, for purchase. Um, if you'd like to purchase it, uh, my contact information can be below the video. Um, you can reach me at John Sullivan83 at Gmail. Um, you can reach me through T-shirt forums. My username is Sully Man, um, or you can go to DeviantArt, and my URL is SullyMan.DeviantArt.com. Um, yeah, so if you, if you like it, like what you see, and uh, want to make a purchase feel free to contact me. So anyways, basically what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be working with this. Um, I went ahead and went in and kind of changed the colors a little bit. Um, I'm sure we've, if, if, if you're in t-shirt production and, and you're somebody that has to work with the designs and get them ready for press, um, you run into the issue um, with a client that sends you uh, vector artwork, which is great. I mean, that's, a, that's definitely a leg up um, getting vector artwork. And we've all... Uh, had somebody send us over a PDF that has an embedded JPEG into it. So they, they basically provide you the vector artwork, but there's just RGB and CMYK color values scattered throughout the whole thing. Um, and you have to change it. You have to make them one consistent Pantone. Um, you know, there could be thousands of objects and anchor points that you have to deal with. And it's just, it gets insane. It's, it's mind boggling. But um, what I'm going to show you today is a super fast way of recoloring the artwork and saving you tons of time. Um, maybe even saving jobs. I mean, they, you've probably been to the point where they, they send you the artwork, it's great, but there's just so much time involved in recoloring it that you kind of have to send them on their merry way, uh, that you can't can't handle the, the time it takes to color correct the artwork and um, it, it costs you more money to actually do that for them. So this is the fastest and uh, most effective way and, and save time and money. So what you're going to do here is, here's the close to awesome artwork. Um, you know, the the crappy designer just didn't do the colors right. So we're going to go ahead and get, get the colors right. What you're going to do is start by uh, getting everything prepared. We want to have it one specific Pantone for the specific design. Uh, we're trying to keep it cost effective print wise. So starting off in your swatches uh, palette you want to get rid of all the colors that you're not using. So what you're going to do is uh, in Adobe, this is Adobe Illustrator CS6. I'm going to go ahead and click this little drop down menu. I'm going to go ahead and select all unused. And what that's going to do is select almost all of the unused colors. So now you can see they've got a kind of white box around them because that just shows they're selected. I'm going to click and drag them onto the trash can to remove them. And it's going to leave us with the Panatone we actually want to use um, that was used in the artwork as you can see um, you know it's some of the final uh, product um, colors are in there so it's using that color that's why it's still in the swatches palette but I'm going to go ahead and click and control click uh, the remaining colors I don't need and trash them so now we're left with the Pantone that we want to use. So now uh, what I'm going to do from here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select all of the artwork. Um, now when you do that in your options menu at the top of the artboard, you're going to find this little color wheel button. Uh, if you hover above it, it'll say recolor artwork. We're going to go ahead and click on that. So this is recolor artwork or previously live color. Um, and it actually colors live. So what's great about that is you, you can mess with all these color values, um, see what they do to the actual artwork, um, or not. You can actually uncheck this to not see what it does. But I leave it on. Um, you can change the color within here, see what it does, and it won't affect it until you hit OK, which is fantastic. So you can kind of mess around with stuff. 
Um, you also have the option of clicking on to find color harmony. So right now, being this color is the one selected, you can see that it's um, finding all sorts of harmony rules, like split complementary palettes, high contrast palettes, compound palettes, monochromatic palettes. Um, that that's definitely a useful one that I actually use and. Uh, you know, it's just it's just very powerful. A lot of stuff you can do with it. So now what I'm going to do here is we want a one pan tone. Um, so what we're going to do is click on our first one, and then we're going to hold Shift um, and click on each color that we want to uh, change. Now, as you can see here, what this is showing is the Panatone and its values. So we've used one Panatone, but you can see in this artwork the values changed. Value being um, keeping the hue, which is the color, the value is the darkness or lightness to that specific hue. So it's this pink hue and then the value gets lighter as we go. So what it's showing now in just this one section is just one color, but it has different values so it shows that. Now if I hold shift and click you can see it just clicks that one specific value we want to click them all. So on the outside, you'll see this little button here. When you hold shift and click that, it selects them all. I'm going to continue on holding shift, click on this red, um, and we've got them all selected now. What we're going to want to do is down here, you have some buttons. And you can create a new row out of all these selections. Um, exclude selected colors so they won't be recolored. Um, separate colors into different rows and merge colors into a row. That is what we're looking to do. We want to merge all these colors into one row and then turn them into the one pantone that we want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one. Great, fantastic. So what it did was actually merged it into that top color. The first selection that we made, which was a kind of uh, orange brown color. Um, now you can see they're all merged into that one row. What we're going to want to do is over here you can click on this and you can actually preserve tints. You can scale tints to keep them kind of close to the artwork that you had or exact. I'm going to go through these and show you kind of what they do. So you can you can click on them. They're not going to show, but once you double click on them, um, it's going to apply it. So if we do exact, you get that one tone and it just keeps them 100% of that pan tone. You lose all the values. We don't want that. We're going to keep scale. We're going to go to scale tints. Go back and it keeps everything nice. Now if you double click, instead of hitting the drop down, if you double click on the little thumbnail, it'll bring you to the color picker. Now that's great. You can go to the color picker and do what you have to do if that's your setup and don't have to worry about pantones. You can change it and you know, say we'll go with the green, we'll pick a random green, hit OK. Recolors all the artwork. It's fantastic. So, But we want to select the pantone that we set aside in the beginning. If you see in the swatches palette, they have that pink pantone that we want because again it's Brent's Cancer Awareness Month folks. So let's uh, go ahead and double click on that thumbnail and let's go to color swatches because we have it in our swatches palette. So let's go to color swatches. We have that pantone set aside which is the pantone 226 and select it, hit OK. Great, we got it. So that's kind of what we want to do. Um, now as far as the values um, there's not too much you can do that's so you actually kind of have to go to in manually to tweak a few things but uh, you know the, the bulk of the work is done you have it down to that one panatone color that saved you hours on end having to go through so many different layers of objects just to reach that one little thing that you have to change you know uh, the color of it just saves you so much time so we're gonna go ahead and hit OK um, and that's it that, that, that's the artwork as one pantone color I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the uh, the original artwork. So you have your mock-up printed up uh, on a piece, piece of paper as reference. We're going to check it. It's definitely not matching up. So we kind of want to go in and uh, tweak some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the original. We already know right off the bat this color here on the bird needs to match this lighter color. So what I'm going to do is select it and as you can see it picks the value in the color picker box. If I uh, use the eyedropper tool I can just eyedropper the color that I want to use. In this case it's going to be this Panatone color but we want that specific value of that hue. So I'm going to hit the eyedropper and I'll select that value and voila that's what we have. So basically you kind of go in and start tweaking things that need to be tweaked. Um, I know these two F flying owls need to be this dark 100 percent. 
value. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I know this font back here needs to be the same thing. So I'm going to use also use the magic wand tool. Now with the magic wand tool, you can click this. It's going to pick up a lot of values. What I'm going to do is double click on the magic wand to make sure I have a tolerance of one. I only want one value or one color. That's what it's going to do. So I'm going to pick this specific one. I'm going to knock it back to 100%. Looking pretty, pretty good so far. I'm going to click on this one because I know it has to match this one up here. Magic wand that one. Pan of tone so it's 100%. Zoom out and check my artwork again. Some minor values there. That's fine. They're close enough, I think. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty satisfied with that. That should show up pretty good on press. So I'm actually going to leave it at that. Um, so yeah, that, that all in all is um, recolor artwork in Illustrator. It'll definitely save you hours of time um, and frustration um, and money as well and, and, and keeping clients just in case the artwork's messed up and uh, you got to go in there and do it. And uh, and that's kind of how you get it done. So I just want to thank everybody for watching. And again, if you'd like to purchase this design, um, you'll find my contact information below. And again, thanks for watching. Again, if you'd like to purchase this design for you to print at your own shop and uh, produce t-shirts, or if you'd like to actually purchase a t-shirt from me, uh, please find my contact information below this video. Uh, my email is johnsullivan83 at gmail.com. If you'd like to find out more about the t-shirt industry, along with uh, art techniques, just like the one you just saw, uh, head over to t-shirtforums.com. You can find me under the username sullyman. Uh, if you'd like to see my body of work, uh, head over to deviantart.com, and the URL you can find me at is sullyman.deviantart.com. Again, thanks for watching.